this video, we are going to cut the shit about Matt Owies. We are going to unpack these allegations, I'm going to call them, of a reported salary request of $800,000. And the last 12 to 15 hours, whenever these reports were made, have given us another layer of an example as to how volatile the mainstream media can be when it comes to reporting fact or fiction um, and how easily anything reported by the mainstream media can be taken as fact when it comes to footy players and contracts and the like. So let, let's start with where this all began. So th this all began with a report that Matt Owies had been requesting a salary of $800,000. So if you have a look here, you've got super footy, tweet about it. You've got 3AW, tweet about it. You know, always is currently out of contract with an AFL great stating he's overpriced himself. We have got so many of these reports suggesting that he's put a price tag on his head at the club and maybe that's why he hasn't yet got a deal from the Carlton Football Club. The thing that gets me, right, is that these organizations and these people who make these reports like they have AFL media accreditation. So they, they've obviously gone through some sort of a process and their integrity has been ticked off. You know, are they a fit and proper person to be doing such work and reporting on the AFL? I look at these reports and I mean, we look at the facts now. So Sam Edmund has come out this morning and said that he spoke to Matt Owey's manager, Matt Bain last night. And he said that reports of his salary were wildly inaccurate completely false. His manager was filthy. This has done Matt Owey's reputation no favors, unfortunately. He's not asking for seven hundred dollars to 800000 though. That is not true at all. So we go through hours of these initial reports coming through and then we go through, you know, a journalist like Sam Edmund, who I, I actually use Sam Edmund's reports a lot because he's, he's got a down pat. There are very few that I really enjoy their work and he's one of them. Um, and obviously it's been knocked on the head, but you look at the flow on effect of what happened yesterday and last night, and then you see the rhetoric from Carlton supporters and footy supporters alike, and it's just wild. And it's such fuckery. And it's just bemusing to me that these people have accreditation. These are the actual facts of the matter. He hasn't been offered a deal at Carlton due to the list squeeze. We've already seen Nick Austin talk about this. We're looking to create some flexibility in the list. We've got young players coming through. He's referred to Ashton Moyer. He's referred to, you know, the Billy Wilsons and and the like. And obviously there's also the draft that we're about to go to. We're getting these Camp Rally boys. Um, you know, we're elevating a couple onto the senior list and potentially making a play for a player as well via the trade period. Dan Houston is a name that's being floated around. Who knows what else is happening under the under the surface. We know that his preference is to stay at Carlton, but again, there is a list squeeze. There's a list spot squeeze at the moment. And he's unfortunately having to go through this period of uncertainty because obviously we're looking to reshuffle things and change the way that our forward line is structured. And, and you know, unfortunately or fortunately, that's just the way it goes. And that's just the situation that we're in. He hasn't asked Carlton or anyone for any such money. So th these are the facts. So. It's just really important, I think, that we are clear on this before we, the seed gets planted in the head and then it grows and then we're all having these conversations amongst ourselves. And look, that's trade period and that's speculation and I understand that. But I think this report in particular, like this this one creates a narrative around Matt Owies that he, you know, he's being greedy or something like that. And I think that's so far from the truth. I've had the pleasure of speaking to him on this channel twice. When he first arrived at the club, I remember after one of his first few VFL games against Footscray, kicked five goals and we spoke to him. This guy is nothing but a professional. He's diligent in his preparation. He's available, he's durable, and he also shows an ability to improve every single season. And so when I see his reputation take a hit, on the field and people referring to him as greedy or, you know, just sort of buying into that narrative. It, it It's a shame. Now, the overarching sentiment around this is, this is the reality of being a professional athlete. 
this is the reality of being a professional athlete that plays for the Carlton Football Club. You are very easily part of speculation. Harry Mackay copped it not long ago with the uh, you know the, the trade that was potentially going to happen between you know him and maybe bringing Christian Petrarca, and and that's the game. But I just think it's important that we cut through and use some critical thinking. And I, I would I would hope that most of you watching this, and I would hope that most Carlton supporters saw this and didn't take it as fact. Um, but it's just another reminder that this is this is also what happens when you finish eighth and you let an opportunity slip. And when you finish eighth and you watch other teams go ahead of you, particularly, you know, six or seven other teams go ahead of you. And then the grand final happens. You become part of the footy frenzy that is silly season. So this is definitely at the top of the silly scale. And, you know, I remember this time last year, there wasn't as much of this. There was, you know, talks around Paddy Dow leaving and, you know, Zach Fisher as well. But I don't think it really got to this level because we played deep into the season and there was a sentiment of pride and positivity and, you know, a, a sense of trust around Carlton and, and where they were at. So the unfortunate realities of silly season are here. He's not asking for seven hundred or eight hundred thousand dollars a year, so let's just be sure about that and move forward. Now, I don't know what's going on. We did hear that there is a push and a, and a trust in what's going to happen with the likes of Corey Durden and Jesse Motlop and um, you know Ashton Moyer and giving him game time. And you know we did a video a few weeks ago around you know Zach Williams now playing in that small forward role. So. I'm just happy to leave it in the unknown. We'll find out what we need to find out when it happens and we'll go from there. Go Blues.